Greetings, let me spend just a few minutes going over our first discussion post of this course. Um, we're gonna look at what leadership traits do you possess? And according to research, and you'll see the list, and um, I'll have it below this video, there are seven traits that differ leaders from non-leaders. So what I want us to look at are just those seven traits. And um, the first of those is ambition and energy. Um, to be a leader, you've got to have a little bit of ambition and a lot of energy. Um, and that is having just the fortitude to carry on when it gets hard because we know that leadership is going to be difficult. We know there's going to be setbacks along the way. And do you have the energy to do that? And do you have the ambition? Do you have that burning desire to be a leader? Um, you do, that's a, that's an important trait to have. Um, then just the desire to lead. And some people just really don't have that desire to lead. There are people that like to be, say, the wingman or the utility man. Um, they like to be to the side and they don't want that attention. And I know great people in organizations that that do really, really well and would would probably serve well in a leadership role, but they just don't have that desire to lead. And then honesty and integrity. Uh, we've talked about that over and over and we'll talk about that more throughout the course and throughout this class is just having honesty, being honest with your, your people that you work with, having um, just above reproach when it comes to dealing with people that are under you, people that are over you, and then integrity. That's doing the right thing, even when you could get away with doing something wrong. Um, you always are striving to have highly ethical standards in your work. And then self-confidence. Now, when I talk about self-confidence, um, and we've discussed it, it's not arrogance, but it needs to be a confidence that you have in yourself. Yes, I know this job. Yes, I know what to do. Yes, I can pursue this. I can go forward with it. And um, I'm confident in the work that I do. Intelligence. Um, you you do better uh, when you have relative intelligence. And, and I've studied this over the years. And when I talk about intelligence, I'm not talking about those woohoo smart people. Now I work at Union University. I work with some highly intelligent people, but I'm talking about people in leadership roles. If you, you look at uh, the bell curve of when it comes to intelligence, we're, we're talking about those people not in that upper off the chart, but just in that middle range that they've they've got the job knowledge and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But they they're they're intelligent enough that they can make decisions, they can make them well. Uh, they're the people that can can pivot quickly and, and know how to do it. And and they um their decision making skills are are the, the acuity that they have with that is is so much better than other employees out there. And then they're high self monitoring. And when I talk about self monitoring, these are the people that have the on or the off switch. They know that okay, I've gotten to this point. Mm, time for me to back off. Uh, I don't need to go any further with this. I need to stop because if I go across that line, then then I've gone too far. They know how to control their emotions. Um, and it's not, and you know how to control the emotions of others. So they know when an, uh, something escalates that they've got to pull back and they know when to do it and they know how to do it. And then again, control of their own emotions that they can monitor themselves and they understand what they're feeling. I mean, I've known people, you probably have, that just have absolutely no control over their emotions. They don't do well in leadership because you've got to be able to monitor yourself. And then job relevant knowledge. It doesn't mean you have to know everything about the position, but you need to have an understanding of what you were doing. You need to have an understanding of that. You need to hire good people that will be under you that can come alongside you and, and help you and enhance you in your work. So, We've got those traits and um, those are the seven traits. And I want you to think about yourself and where you fall in that. And think about the two traits that you exhibit 
the most and those traits that you could work on at least two of those and um, just this will be in the discussion post and I'll have the directions below this is just think of those and, and I've said it I'll say it again it's great to know your strengths but it's better to know your weaknesses because um, Dr. Abington who was wonderful uh, preacher in this area and professor um, we don't just go through life, we grow through it. So you are not stagnant. You are not sitting there and go, oh, I don't like change. I'm not going to change. No, you have to be a part of change and you have to be a part of a change agent and you have to change yourself and you can do it. Uh, so we are going to go grow through um, hopefully this course and you can explore some sides of yourself that maybe you haven't seen before. All right, read the directions and uh, this will be our class discussion. I'll chime in a few times and uh, just look at yourself and take an honest assessment of yourself and where you see yourself. Have a great one, guys.